chapter 15. Jake thought a lot about what Dave had said. Run to run. Winning will take care of itself. He had won the last race, hadn't he? Why not enjoy it? He couldn't shake what Simon had said either. Love what you love. He did love running. Or he used to. There had to be a way he could get that back. The team had done a serious practice on wind sprint Wednesday. Jake had logged two long runs on Thursday. Now it was Friday and Dave had told him, take the night off. Jake wasn't used to that yet. It just didn't seem right to him. But Dave had said he didn't want to risk anyone getting hurt the day before the regional run, especially since sort torpedo dog could be lurking anywhere. That made sense. Still, Jake felt like running. He'd go easy. It would be for fun. He wasn't going to worry about anything. Not his time. Not the distance. Not the run tomorrow. Not the championship run on Tuesday. Not Spencer. Especially not Spencer. He changed his some running gear, and on his way downstairs, he saw Luke in his room. Jake paused, then knocked on the half-open door. Hey, Luke, you want to come run with me? Jake pulled aside his headphones. Say what, little bro? I was just wondering if you want to come for a run with me. Luke grinned. Me? Yeah. Run? Yeah. Are you nuts? Jake laughed. Okay, then. He turned to go downstairs, but then returned to the half-open door. Hey, you've got all your stuff back up here now. Yep. How come I don't hear you playing? Dad bought these heavy-duty headphones. Now I can play without anyone else hearing. Dad got you headphones? I am using them, yes, but I think he actually got them for you. Oh. Jake made his way back to the door and put on his shoes. His mother was in the kitchen making tea. Mom? He cleared his throat. Do you, uh, do you know if Dad's been coming out to the Tuesday runs? Tuesday runs? She tried to pretend she didn't know what he was talking about. Mom? She put down the teapot and leaned against the counter. Yes, Jake. He's been going to the Tuesday runs. How come he never said anything? Well, he didn't want to, what was the word? Distract you? Oh. The door to Jake's dad's workshop behind the garage was half open too. His dad was whistling as he sanded something. Dad? Jake-o. Uh, Luke showed me his headphones. Uh-huh. They seem to work well. Yep. Dad? Yes. Uh, Nothing, I guess. You going for a run against Jake? Be careful. Jake nodded. Do you, uh, you want to come with me? His dad looked up. He looked alarmed. Jake laughed. Never mind. It was definitely frosty outside, but for some reason, Jake felt warm inside. He zipped up his jacket tugged on his winter hat, and started out at a leisurely pace, trying to take in all the scenery. Most of the trees had lost all their leaves. There were still piles of them here and there, and they gave off a heavy smell. Jake heard laughter and shouting. Kids were playing road hockey. The street lights glowed, and soft yellow light warmed the windows all along the street. After 15 minutes, Jake decided he'd gone far enough. He jogged back home, passing the new restaurant on the corner. A big banner was plastered across the front, now open. Jake stopped and looked in. Bright chrome countertops, pizza offered on one side, ice cream on the other, cheery red checkered tablecloths. Maybe he'd tell his family they should come and try it. It was busy. Jake noticed a family just finishing their dinner. Looked like they were having a nice time together. Mom, dad, sister, brother. They all laughed at something the father said, then stood to pull on their jackets. Yes, thought Jake. He would ask his parents if they could come for dinner one night. Should be okay to bend the food rules one time. It would be fun to have a night out with his family. Jake smiled and stepped out of the way as the family left the restaurant. When the young boy passed him, though, Jake's warm feeling drained away. 
was Spencer. So, Spencer Solomon was back in action. Would he be at the championship run on Tuesday? Jake was sure he would be. He'd have to be ready. Jake had planned to go in, but instead he ran right past his house, picked up the pace, and clocked another few kilometers. This was no time for fooling around.